Three great drivers, all pushing to the absolute limit just to beat one another. But what happens at a time when Formula 1 is deadlier than ever? Then you get this rivalry, Formula 1's bloodiest rivalry. This story starts with Mike Hawthorne, a tall and blonde racer known for his charisma and cheerful nature. Enzo Ferrari held a strong liking for him, recognizing his exceptional talent and courage. Ferrari's close observation of Hawthorne began with his debut race in 1952, where his remarkable performance included qualifying 6th and claiming 4th place. In less than a year, he became an official Ferrari racer. Whilst this was going on, another driver by the name of Peter Collins was rising through the ranks. In 1955 and 56, he won the 24 Hours of Le Mans, prompting Ferrari to sign him in Formula 1 as their future star. While Collins was busy winning Le Mans, another rapid driver would arise, Luigi Musso. The Italian was known for his constant risk-taking, with some going as far as to say that it was part of his very nature. From 1953 to 55, he raced for Maserati, achieving great results considering the circumstances. Enzo Ferrari was impressed and decided to sign him. Therefore, heading into the 1957 season, we would see the three young prodigies head to head for success in the highest category in motorsport. But there was a huge conflict. Collins and Hawthorne had made a deal where both of them split their earnings equally if they won, whilst Musso was not in disagreement. This made him feel betrayed and infuriated, meaning inside the Ferrari team, it was Collins and Hawthorne versus Musso. Surprisingly, this hostility benefited Ferrari instead of harming it. The more the drivers pushed their speed, the better results they would gain, for now. Collins managed a third place outcome in the German Grand Prix, but for the most part, the team faced challenges throughout the season due to the excess weight and lack of power. Hawthorne also had a mediocre season with little podiums and a couple of point finishes. Meanwhile, Musso performed better, finishing third overall with two podiums. Ferrari possessed numerous admirable traits, but being emotional sensitive was not one of them. They worked for Ferrari during a risky period, made even more challenging by Ferrari's blunt approach to his drivers. While this was a benefit at first, they would later see it was far from good. Heading into the 1958 season, this is where things get really interesting. That season Ferrari developed quite a fast car, capable of competing for the title, and we would see the Vanwell team also develop a speedy car with legendary drivers like Sterling Moss, Tony Brooks, and Stuart Lewis Evans behind the wheel. Therefore, each of the drivers had intense competition that season, and they were ready to claim the ultimate crown of motorsports. In the first qualifying session, Hawthorne and Collins were separated by less than a tenth of a second. Meanwhile, Musso qualified fifth, a couple of positions behind. Before the lights even went out, Peter Collins already had a car failure, but when the lights did go out, Mike Hawthorne quickly took the lead. After the Ferrari's pit, Moss was winning, followed by Hawthorne and Musso. He led the rest of the race, taking the win, but barely ahead of Musso, with Hawthorne behind him. As they headed into round 2 at Monaco, Luigi Musso would once again beat them both, but then lost the race by a considerable margin. Mike Hawthorne would also suffer a mechanical failure early on, putting an end to his race. The following race in the Netherlands would be difficult for them. Hawthorne would finish 5th with Luigi Musso in 7th. Peter Kahn's retired early from a gearbox failure, putting him at a higher disadvantage. At this point in time, it seemed like Musso was going to be the one to win the world championship. He was only 5 points behind Sterling Moss for the title, whilst Hawthorne was in 5th with only 7 points and Collins with 4. Skipping the Indy 500, the next race would be Hawthorne's comeback, as he drove a solid race and claimed 2nd place behind Tony Brooks. Collins would suffer from overheating and Musso had an accident which saw his retirement. It was very noticeable that the rivalry was Musso against Hawthorne and Collins as they would constantly work together whilst leaving Musso by himself with no support. However, Enzo Ferrari felt Collins was distracted by his party lifestyle. The Monaco yacht where he lived was considered the hotspot for huge celebrations, leading Collins to be distracted and no longer focus on driving and developing his cars. 
This would reach the limit when he was sacked by Ferrari after deliberately damaging the clutch in his car, which he shared with Hawthorne during the 24 hours of Le Mans. The worst part was that he was found drinking in a pub before the end of the race. This made Ferrari infuriated and demoted him to Formula 2 for the rest of the season. However, Hawthorne was absolutely furious with this decision and told Enzo Ferrari he would not race unless he allowed Cons to come back. That's how strong their friendship was. They were willing to sacrifice the world championship just for one another. Sadly, the same could not be said about Musso. This race was important for him. At this point in time, he was in debt due to the rivalry in which he was constantly losing money. But at this race specifically, there was the biggest prize for the victory. Therefore, he had to win. Peter Kahn's was allowed to race again and the challenge he posed was strong. Hawthorne qualified on pole whilst Musso was right behind him in second and Kahn's was in fourth. As the race began, Hawthorne had the lead by lap one, with Musso behind him trying to catch up. Musso was pushing to the absolute limit. He needed to win this race. Impressively, he had managed to catch up to Hawthorne by the 10th lap. However, tragedy unfolded when Musso approached a high-speed curve past the pit zone. He turned at excessive speed, leading to a slide, loss of control, and a serious crash. His car hit a ditch and flipped, sustaining severe injuries as he was transported to the hospital for treatment. Sadly, he passed away later that day. It was a terrible day for Formula 1, but not for the rivals. Hawthorne and Collins didn't seem to care, laughing and playing a game of football with an empty beer can following the fatality. This is how ugly the rivalry had become. Not even the life of a fellow racer mattered. Collins was sacked by Ferrari again for an unrelated reason, leaving him without a drive. This caused Hawthorne to storm the Ferrari headquarters, infuriated once again because of the decision. After forcefully breaking through locked doors, Hawthorne informed Enzo Ferrari that he wouldn't continue driving for him unless Collins was let back in the seat. Ferrari initially refused this demand, but after realizing the tragic passing of Musso, they were missing one of their essential drivers, leading to Collins temporarily retaining his position. At this point in the season, Moss and Hawthorne were tied in the standings, with Collins all the way down in 10th place. He needed to put in a great performance if he wanted any chance of winning the title, and heading into Great Britain, his home race, expectations were high. To say he delivered on his expectations though, would be a huge understatement. He would have a bad start by qualifying poorly in 6th place, with teammate Hawthorne qualifying in front of him in 4th. However, when the lights went out, Collins would push to the absolute limit, harder than he had ever done previously. Before he knew it, he was in second place behind Moss. After a remarkable drive, he moved up to first place, gaining time on the others. When he crossed the line, he had finished over 24 seconds ahead of Hawthorne, putting in one of the greatest drives in Formula 1 history. He got enough points to once again be in contention, now at the third spot in the title fight. Nevertheless, he still had to perform in the next races, as his time was running out with only 4 rounds remaining to finish catching up. The next round, however, would be a track known as the Green Hell. It was time for the Nürburgring, Formula 1's deadliest track. Collins started in 4th that weekend, with Hawthorne in pole position followed by Moss and Brooks. During the race, he was engaged in a very close fight with Hawthorne for the lead of the race. He was on the edge once again, taking every corner in the most dangerous ways, carrying his Ferrari to its limits. However, this time he wouldn't be so lucky. While entering one of the most dangerous parts of the track, he went with excessive speed, taking the most risky line. Unfortunately, his risk wouldn't pay off, as his Ferrari went off track as it couldn't navigate the turn properly, ending up in a ditch. The car then spiraled out of control, flipped in the air, and landed upside down. In the process, Collins was ejected from the vehicle and collided with a tree, resulting in severe head injuries. Despite receiving medical attention, Collins passed away later that afternoon in a hospital. Two of the three racers had just passed away. While at first it seemed good that the drivers took risks and pushed themselves, it quickly went overboard and caused tragedies. Hawthorne and Enzo Ferrari were in despair following the accidents, so much so that Hawthorne vowed to win the title for him. 
he would end up fulfilling his promise, as he claimed the championship by one point following an intense rivalry with Sterling Moss. After winning, he decided to retire from racing as the painful memory of his friend was too much for him. However, this is not the end of the story. Only three months after his retirement, on the 2nd of January 1959, he tragically passed away at a highway in England. The accident took place on a section of the road that was known for its high danger level, and the road surface was wet at the time. While driving at a speed of 80 miles per hour, Hawthorne passed one of his friends in a race. Afterward, he entered a right-hand curve, but he hit a keep left post that separated the two sides of the road. This impact led to him losing control of the vehicle. He eventually collided with a tree on the side of the road, with the force of the collision resulting in fatal head injuries for Hawthorne. His need for adrenaline had just killed him. All three were dead within a year of their rivalry. It all started out as a close battle between the three drivers, but it ended up taking a tragic turn. Their shared passion for racing drove them to push boundaries, break records, and compete at the highest levels of motorsport. However, this pursuit of excellence often led them to put themselves in perilous situations, where split-second decisions and pushing to the limit had dire consequences. 